Hi, this is Steve Bartlett. I'm the founder and the director of Ambassadors for Christ. And you know, I'm really excited about the opportunity that I have today to be with you. What I'm wanting to do is to do some basic evangelism training. Many of these lessons that I'm going to be sharing with you are foundational completely to my life and to our ministry. I've been training people in how to win the lost for well over 30 years at this point. It's hard to imagine it's been that long. And yet, some of these lessons are so critical to our understanding of God's will and God's purpose for our lives. And I just really hope that, that you have a hunger and a desire, because I know if you do, you'll really grow. And you'll grow not just personally, but you're going to grow in your ministerial skill and your ability to reach out and to make an impact in the lives of other people. If you've got a manual and all you really need to do is to, is to send us an email or give us a call and you can pick one of our manuals up, I have right now two manuals that are in production, two manuals that you, could, you can pick up from us dealing with evangelism and how to share your faith. This first one, I mean, what kind of an original title of, of it is Evangelism Manual 1, but that's what we have. And I have 10 lessons in here that I believe lay an absolute foundation for us in learning how to be effective. So let's just take a minute and jump right in. The first lesson is called God's Eternal Purpose. And what I'm going to do is read several passages of Scripture. It was a mind-boggling realization one day when I realized that evangelism is not a New Testament concept. But God, from literally the beginning, um, has had a worldwide vision. God has always been the God of the entire world. And, and truly, even as far back as Abram, uh, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, we see a radical passage of Scripture that gives us an understanding of God's heart. So again, in this first one, I call this lesson, God's Eternal Purpose. Let's just take a minute, we're going to do sort of a, a, a survey of even the Old Testament and get a glimpse at how much God really loves the entire world. In the book of Galatians, I'm going to get, again just sort of go right through our manual here, right through the lesson that you have in front of you. The Bible says in Galatians 3, 7 to 9, God speaking about Abraham, and this is obviously Paul, but it's the Holy Spirit through Paul, said, Therefore know that only those that are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham. Now that's 2,000 years before Jesus came. How on earth could God preach the gospel to Abraham when the gospel doesn't even come to us into the New Testament? Well, listen to what Paul says, that God preached the gospel to Abraham before saying, in you all the nations, all the people shall be blessed. Therefore, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. And if you quote back to Genesis, where, where Paul is getting this revelation, listen to what it says. Now the Lord said to Abram, I'm in Genesis 12, 1, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, and to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I'll bless those that bless you, and I'll curse him that curses you. And listen to this phrase, In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let me ask you something. Is evangelism really just a New Testament concept? Or did God reveal His purpose? And hence the title, God's Eternal Purpose. Did God reveal His purpose right there in Genesis chapter 12? The book and all the books of the New Testament aren't written for thousands of years. And yet God has already revealed his heart to the human race. Abram, and he later becomes Abraham, I'm going to bless you. My, my hand is going to be upon you. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name great. 
but even more importantly, Abraham, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed through you. Does that sound like God's only interested in the Jews? Or does that sound like God is the God of all of creation? And that God loves every person on this earth equally and with all his heart to where he would want to bless. Think of that for a minute. God is not an angry God up there in heaven waiting to wipe somebody out. His purpose is that all the families of the earth, all the people, the goim, the ethnic groups, all the peoples living on the earth, are going to be blessed through what he does in this one man, Abraham. So again, when you go back and look at the Old Testament, realize that God was continually reaching out to the whole world through his people. Now think with me for just a minute, and you can see this in your outline. I, I have a statement here that, that many times, when I say it, people raise an eyebrow and wonder, what on earth are you talking about? But listen to this statement. Abraham could have been the most outstanding missionary evangelist in the Old Testament or in all of human history. Now why do I say that? Well, did God reveal himself to the Egyptians through Moses? Did he reveal himself to all these Canaanite nations? Or not Moses, excuse me, Abraham. Did God reveal himself to all the peoples of the earth and that region of the earth through Abraham's life at that time in history? The answer is yes. Did he reveal himself to Abimelech, the king of Gerar, and no less than a dozen different city-states? You know, it's exactly the same thing we find with God reaching out to the Egyptians through Joseph. And, and, you know, it's a couple of generations down the line. But think about this for a minute. Is God constantly putting his people into a position where they're going to have interaction with the different peoples in the world? And the answer is yes. God sends Joseph into Egypt. And do you remember what the Pharaoh says? Inasmuch as God has shown you all this... Pharaoh learns firsthand that God is God through the life of Joseph. Again, we need to sort of rethink the Bible. We would say, well, no, God is just the God of the Jews. No, he's not. He's a God that's reaching out to the entire human race. And it never stops throughout all of Old Testament history. When we do finally get to Moses, God reveals himself to the Hebrews and a much fuller revelation than they ever had before, to the Egyptians, to the Amalekites, to the Midianites, to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Now think of that for a minute. We would say that, that God again is upset with all these nations. And yet do you realize that all God can do is reach out to these nations through his people, the people Israel. And as Moses literally goes into this promised land and through the wilderness, one nation after another, after another, after another, is going to realize that God is God. Do you remember what Pharaoh says? I mean, because it, it's, it's really a powerful statement that Moses says God is God. Think of that for a minute. Why didn't he repent? Why not fall down on his knees and say, okay, I realize that there is a God, and all these statues and all this stuff that we're doing isn't getting us anywhere with him. Instead, he hardens his heart. But God, nevertheless, reached out to him and did everything he could to make himself real to that generation. And again, as I said a minute ago, you realize it never stops. Moses brings the people up right to the promised land. And for me, the book of Numbers is one of, the, one of the most disappointing in the whole Bible. Because God was looking for the day when he was going to bring his people into the promised land. And he was going to show the whole world his power and his goodness and his glory. And do you remember what happened? They send in the, the spies, and ten of them literally chicken out. 
They had a chicken spirit on them. The bottom line is, instead of going into the promised land, they see themselves as grasshoppers, and they see these, these quote-unquote giants in the land as people that they couldn't possibly you know, go in and take that land. And yet God had prepared a place for his people. And they end up not going in. And if you have your outline, look down on page 3 here. We're in the book of Numbers chapter 14, where Caleb um, and, and Joshua in four, Numbers 14, 6-9, listen to what the scripture says. Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were among those that spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of Israel, saying, The land we pass through is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, He's going to bring us into this land, and He's going to give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only don't rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them because the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. It's an amazing faith statement. Here you have two men that don't think like everybody else. They realize that since God is with them, they can go in and possess the promised land. Now, I don't know about you. And again, I hear so many that actually make a condemnation against God saying, how on earth could God go in and take this land? Listen, if you just watched Egypt destroyed because of the hardness of their hearts, and now these people are here, and the Red Sea has opened up, and now the Jordan River has opened up in the next generation, and you realize that these people are here, and that God's hand is on them, let me ask you this, wouldn't you go out and find out and say, hey, what do we need to do to know this God that's obviously working among you? What did they do? They hardened their hearts. And instead of opening themselves up to God, what more could God do than to come to them and give them the opportunity to repent? Think about that for a minute. Now this, this next passage I want to read to you, for me, is one of the most outstanding in the entire Old Testament. I'm in Numbers chapter 14, where Moses is interceding on behalf of this group that's just refused to go into the promised land. And listen to what he says. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy. Just as you have forgiven the people from Egypt until now. And the Lord says, I have pardoned them according to your word. But listen to this. As surely as I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now time out. What does that mean? I'll forgive you, of course, for not doing what you needed to to go into the promised land. But understand something. As surely as I live, my purpose of showing my glory to the whole world is going to come to pass. And as surely as I live, all the earth is going to be filled with the glory of God. That sounds almost like what God said to Abram, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. You know, again, it's just, it's amazing. In that same generation, God reaches out to the Amorites, to the Moabites. In the book of Deuteronomy, which sort of summarizes that entire period of time, listen to what it says. All the peoples of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord your God. All the peoples of the earth are going to see that you're called by the name of the Lord. God's intent was to reveal himself to the whole human race. Now let me ask you something. Again, this is what's taking place at this time in history. This prophet named Balaam, and you can see this on page 4 of your outline, just shows up. Let me ask you something. What on earth is God doing raising up a prophet that the Moabites 
and the Midianites recognize as a prophet of God? Could it be that God was even reaching out to these people that are not part of the Abrahamic lineage, and yet he so loves the world, he's still reaching out and even sending prophets to reach out to these people and to make him known to them. At the same time, we can go back and, and sort of rethink of this in Abram's generation. Here's a guy, Melchizedek, who's known as the priest of the Most High God. What's God doing? Reaching out to people outside of the Abrahamic covenant. And not only that, we see Jethro, the priest of Midian. How do the Midianites have a priest? Could it be that God was reaching out to these different people groups all along? And I want to give you one more thought. Think about this pillar of cloud by day in a pillar of fire by night. Do you not think that all those nations that are watching what's taking place with Israel couldn't have finally said, Wow, God is among these people. See, what I want you to get in this first lesson is that God is the God of salvation to the entire human race. And that God loves every one of these nations. And yet the nations refuse God's witness. And then you have this concept of, well, there's this angry God of the Old Testament. I say there's a loving God of the Old Testament who reached out to generation after generation after generation. And he reveals himself to all the people, literally on the earth, through his special nation Israel. And that was his intention the whole time. If we want to look just for a moment at some of these psalms, they're, they're, they're tremendous. Listen, and you can see this on page 6 of your outline. He says that your salvation shall be known among all nations. That's Psalm 67 and verses 1 to 4. And Psalm 22, listen to how verse 27 starts. All the ends of the earth shall remember and they'll turn to the Lord. All the ends of the earth. Isn't it amazing how there's such a consistency in the Old Testament? While God is dealing with Israel, His dealings with Israel was to open up the door for the entire human race to know the living God. Listen to Psalm 78 and verse 20. Let the whole earth be filled with His glory. That was always God's intention, and it still is today. Now let's fast forward to Solomon's generation. Listen to what it says here in 1 Kings chapter 8. Solomon is praying at the temple dedication. Moreover, this is Solomon's prayer. Moreover, concerning a foreigner that is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for your name's sake. For they will hear of your great name and your strong arm and your outstretched hand. When he comes and prays towards this temple, hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all which the foreigner calls you to do, that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people, Israel. Could you imagine that? In the temple dedication, what is Solomon praying for? But the people all over the world, that are going to hear about the awesome God of Israel and actually come to the temple and pray and seek his face. And what does Solomon ask? That God would hear their prayers. Now again, think about this for a minute. Does this sound like a God that doesn't care about the entire human race? Or did he have a plan from the very beginning? And he's already revealed it to Abram when he says, In you, all the peoples, all the families of the entire earth 
shall be blessed. The reason I start our evangelism training this way is because I want you to think rightly about God. If there's anyone that's been reaching out to the entire human race, it's Almighty God. And if there's anyone that wants to be known to the entire human race and by the entire human race, it's Almighty God. What God is looking for is men and women that aren't afraid, that don't chicken out like they did when they were going into the promised land, but will rise up and say, I know God and God is a good God. See, let me tell you something. I learned this from T.L. Osborne a long time ago. This world wants what I have, a living God who loves and cares and answers our prayers and moves into our life and our lives. Four years ago when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer in my throat and in my neck, and I didn't even know if I was going to live or die, when I called out to the living God, what do you think happened? God touched me, and God healed me, and God restored me. And isn't that what God has been doing to men and women for literally millennia as we call out on Him in humble, simple faith? See, what I'm not, I'm not going out to tell people about some religion, some legalism, some, some do's and don'ts that they need to keep. What I'm telling people about is the living God that loves humanity and has been reaching out to this world for thousands of years. If I, if I move forward again in time a little bit, listen to the prophet Habakkuk. This is Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. He's a 7th century prophet. And he's, he's prophesying at that time in history. And he says, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Could you imagine that? Even at this time in history, God refuses to give up on his dream. And then we can fast forward to the book of Daniel. Can you think of what God was doing at the time of Daniel? Listen to this. The Babylonian Empire, the Mede Empire, and the Persian Empire empire are all going to meet the living God. Listen to the Babylonian king's statement. Truly your God is the God of gods. Listen to the Mede king and, and what he had to say. Your God whom you continually serve, was he able to deliver you? Listen to this. He will deliver you and I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. Understand, God is revealing himself to the human race. You know how he does it now? Through gospel preaching. But let it be settled forever in your heart. God in the Old Testament never loved the human race any less than the God of the New Testament. God has one plan and one purpose, and that is to reach out to the entire human race. Let me give you just a couple of Old Testament prophecies that really stand out to me. These first ones are going to come from Isaiah, and again on page 9 of your outline, you can read these with me. Look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth. If they'll simply look to him, they can be saved. Listen to what Isaiah says in Isaiah 49, 6. Indeed, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to rise up or raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved one of Israel? I will give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Could you imagine the very purpose of Israel was to reveal God's salvation to the entire human race? And listen to this one, Isaiah 66, 23. All flesh shall come and worship me. I want you to know that is a prophecy. And it is going to come to pass. 
As surely as I live, God said, all the earth is going to be filled with the glory of the Lord. And it's going to happen. Listen to what it says here in the book of Hosea. I, I will sow her for myself in the earth, and I'll have mercy on her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people. I wonder who he's talking about there. I'm going to say to the ones that were not my people, now you're my people. Well, if Israel's been his people for all this time, the whole Gentile world is who God is going to be reaching out to. And I will say, or they will say of me, you are my God. Listen to the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Guys, I want you to know something in this very first lesson. I've gone pretty quick. I've gone pretty fast. But I want you to take some time and look at this and realize God, the same God of the New Testament, is the God of the Old Testament. He's not schizophrenic. He's always loved the entire human race, and he's always reached out to the entire human race. And at Ambassadors for Christ, we want to train and equip you to be effective in sharing your faith, even all over the world. And I invite you to join us for these studies, because they're going to be very similar to this one, where I'm going to have an outline, and I'm going to be just going over the highlights with you. Hopefully you'll take some time and read and study and pray through these outlines so that you can get a better grasp of who God is and how much God loves the human race. Can I share it one last time? As surely as I live, declares the Lord, all the earth will be filled with the glory of God. I want you to know that what we do in evangelism and world missions is going to make that come to pass. Jesus said it like this, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, and then the end shall come. Some of you are reading your end time charts and your books on the end times and all that kind of stuff. Can I lovingly say, put it all away. Get out a world map. Begin to pray and ask God, Father, where do you want me to go? After 2,000 years of church history, we've only literally brought the gospel into about half of the world's cultures and population. Our work is cut out for us, guys. And when the gospel has been preached and all the world for a witness, then the end shall come. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. I hope you'll tune in again and learn how to share your faith. God bless you.